Hey everybody, I'm back and my phone cut out last time. So what we were going to do was peel the potatoes and I did. I also had to make a thumbnail. So what we're going to do is chop these up into about the same size pieces, put them in the boiling water and boil them until they're pretty much done all the way through with a fork. And then this came out of the oven. Um, so it's kind of overflowing. So we might put some of it into another tray. Um, our pie is looking okay, but it's still very jiggly. Um, so we can't really take that out of the oven yet. It's not quite done. Um, and then we're going to make some stuffing. If we can, we'll make apple crisp. And if we have time, we'll make the sweet potato casserole as well. Um, trying to think of anything else we're missing. So, all right, we definitely have to make mashed potatoes. So we're going to do that now. Okay, so what I'm doing is just putting these potatoes in little chunks, and then we're just plopping them in the water. Be very careful when you put them in the water because it can splash on you. Um, you can even put them gently in with a ladle. Might actually be more safe because uh, the water will burn you a little bit if you're plopping it in, but... is Okay, so yeah, I'm going to cut a few more of them. And we're going to let them boil for a little bit. And when they're done, we're going to drain them, mash them, put some salt and pepper, milk and butter, and they're going to be real delicious. Okay, so while our potatoes are boiling in here, um, and we they just have to bring back up to a boil because we put all those cold potatoes in the hot water, um, basically we had a little problem over here, which is that this kind of went overboard. It kind of overflowed. So, um, I don't know if I'll just stir it and put, I don't know if I want to dirty another dish, but you know what? I don't know if I want to dirty another dish. Um, I'm going to, it might be okay, honestly. It's not too overflowy, so I'm going to do the best I can and see. Maybe we'll have to put a little bit of it in an extra bowl. All right, so what we're going to do is we put some of our excess in this bowl. Uh, this was flowing over a little bit. We might have to put a little bit more honestly, just so we can fit the fried onions in here. We're going to put some more fried onions. And we already mixed it a little bit. So we mix it around and maybe we'll do a little bit more on top. Oops, kind of hard to do this with one hand, but nice crispy crust of fried onions on the top. So, and you don't need to actually have the tin foil on at this point because um, you want that to get a nice crust on it. So you can put that in at 350 for um, around 10 to 15 minutes more. So, yeah, we're going to put that baby in there right now. Great. Alrighty, so we've got our um, pumpkin pie in here. I think the pumpkin pie might be ready, so we just have to jiggle it a little bit and see. Um, I believe the inside is supposed to be a little bit jiggly, so I think that means it's ready. So we can take this pumpkin pie out and um, let me just make a space. <laughs> Every time I say make a space, I think of Toy Story. Make a space. Make a space. This is where the spaceship lands. <laughs> so we got our pie out of there and we still have our ham and turkey, our green bean casserole. We have our, we have our potatoes cooking. It looks like I have an alarm for something that's done, possibly the ham. And, um, so the ham should be pretty much ready. Um, and we have our pie out. We have our other pie in the fridge. So we've got this pie cooling down and we're going to have to figure out something to do with this later. We'll make like a mini green bean casserole and we'll boil these guys, make our uh, mashed potatoes. The next thing we need is stuffing. And if we have time, um, we can make apple crisp and some, uh, sweet potato casserole. So, all right, I'll be back, um, in just a second. Okay, so I actually had to go set up a premiere for our channel, 
And looks like our pie is cooling nicely over here. It looks like it's going to be very delicious pumpkin pie. Um, so all you have to do to check if these potatoes are done is just basically see how easily it breaks apart with a fork. And it breaks apart pretty easily right now, honestly. So that's been like... They've been boiling for at least 10, 15 minutes, if not 20. I didn't really pay attention how long they were boiling, but it's it goes through very easily with a fork. So honestly, this is pretty much done. I Hopefully I have a colander. I'm going to go check and make sure I have one because I'm going to need one at this point. So um, let's go see if we have a colander. Hopefully we do because we're going to need one. And then we have to drain these potatoes. Oh, excuse me. We have to drain these potatoes and we're going to put some milk butter in them and then we're going to make um, mashed potatoes. And then after that, um, after that, we're going to try to make some sweet potato casserole and some apple crisp. I don't really, we're going to try to get the sweet potato casserole done. Um, maybe make some cornbread. I know Brandon reminded me we got to get some cornbread going on. So... <laughs> All right, I can't forget the cornbread. I have a lot of Jiffy cornbread mix around here, so this should be really easy to make if I'm able to find a separate like dish I can actually make the cornbread in. All right, um, we're going to go check on the rest of the things that we need. Okay, everybody, the time has come to make the mashed potatoes. So um, hopefully we have everything we need for making mashed potatoes here in front of us. We've got our milk. We have our butter. Um, we just need salt and pepper, but we got our potatoes. So now what we're going to do is put our potatoes back in the bowl. And it's okay if your um, pot is hot because you want to keep them nice and hot. So you're going to have your milk is... Whoops. All right. Kind of hard to do that with one hand without slipping everywhere. So actually, before we put our milk in there and our butter, um, I'm going to put a little butter in first because then the butter will melt easier. Okay, so we have nice little chunks of butter we p p plopped in here. A little bit of milk. And we're going to get some salt and pepper. So we've got our pepper here. Pepper those babies up. Maybe a little bit too much pepper. Great. And I sprinkled a little bit of salt in there as well. So now, what you can do to make mashed potatoes is you don't actually need... You can use a masher. Or can use like a little electrical appliance that I have. I actually use this to make soup. Um, it's like a, what is it called? Oven, oven day, um, blender for soup. And you can also use like a, uh, egg beater or, you know, blender or something. I don't really know how this is going to work. So, um, I'll be back in a second. All right. So, our little special soup blender did not work that well for potatoes, so I guess try something new. Uh, so I busted out this, like, egg beater, I think it is, um, from a while ago. And let's see how this works with the potatoes. You can sit there and mash them. But I feel like it's much easier just to use this than you don't get um, your... Basically, you don't get um, your hands sore from mashing or smashing on the table. All right, great. Those look really great. Um, what I can do is just taste them, and if they need a little bit more butter or salt and pepper, we can do that. And one way to keep these, I just thought of a way to keep these from getting cold, is we could just put them in like a uh, dish or something like that and put them in the oven and just let them kind of bake. So twice baked mashed potatoes maybe. Hmm. They're pretty good. I think they need a lot more butter and um, salt and pepper. So I just put a tiny bit of butter and salt and pepper in them. But we'll just put a little bit more butter, a little salt and pepper, and uh, maybe a tiny bit of garlic powder. And those would be great. Okay, and we just took our... We have stuff falling everywhere because I don't have a lot of room. Just took the uh, green bean casserole out of the oven. It looks fantastic. So we're going to eventually cool that maybe in the fridge or leave this out because it's almost time um, to eat some of this stuff. We probably don't want to cool it, actually. It just cooled the pies. So what I did is I put a little bit more pepper, butter, milk, and a little bit of salt in here. 
And now we're going to blend this again. And I'm probably going to put this in a baking dish so that um, I can keep it warm since I have a little bit of room in the oven now. So let's give that a try. All right, so I put this into a baking dish. So because these sometimes get cold really fast if I'm not done making everything else since we put cold milk into it. So um, I pour it, put this into a baking dish, sprinkled a tiny little bit of pepper on top, and we're gonna just put it in the oven with everything else that's on 350 um, for a little bit. So it'll just get a little crispy crust on top maybe. Okay, and we just took the ham out of the oven and almost burnt myself. Maybe it burnt myself a little bit because the juices were overflowing. So note to self, do be very careful um, especially if you have something very heavy and it has a lot of juice coming out of it. Um, if the juices get on your finger, which I got a little burn on my hand, they can burn your hand if they pour on you or, you know, you definitely don't want to drop this on yourself, heaven forbid. Um, so be very careful. Make sure you have somebody strong enough to take this out of the oven because it's easy enough to put in when it's not cooked, but when it is cooked, it's going to be extremely hot. Um, be careful of the steam when you pull it out of the oven because it'll like hit you right in the face and make sure you have a nice uh, surface that you can actually put this on. Um, so, all right, we're going to try if we can to make some cornbread, apple crisp and sweet potatoes, but I don't know if I'll be able to because I'm not sure if I'll have the energy to. <laughs> um, I know this ham needs to rest. And if we had more pineapples on it, you can see how it would be really kind of pretty with the pineapples over it and stuff. Um, but for right now, that's kind of what we have. Um, you can also take the cover off and bake it a little longer. But I already had it in for so long that I don't really think I needed to do that again. So, um, I may, what I may do is I may end up putting this in a baking dish and baking it off, um, like and with a crust on it so that I can finish this green bean casserole. Cause it was pretty much, it baked for a half an hour, but it didn't bake for the last 10 minutes. So either that or it could just microwave it and be lazy. <laughs> So, um, we're going to see what we're going to do. I'm going to talk to Luke and see what he wants. If, um, if he wants, I can make apple crisp and the other stuff tomorrow. Or honestly, I might just try to marathon it and do it today. So I don't have to worry about it tomorrow because I don't want to forget to make it. <laughs> so anyway, um, this has been part three of Amber making Thanksgiving dinner. I hope everyone's having a great day. We still have the turkey in here because we put that in there frozen um, and that was a spe specific kind that was frozen. So you don't really want to put a whole turkey in frozen, but I'm, I got a turkey breast that was supposed to be freezer to oven safe. So, um, and the reason why you have to be careful of that is you don't want it in the middle of not too hot, not too cold for too long. Cause then it can have germs. So, um, yeah. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this episode of, uh, Amber making Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving with the K-Wings. This is part three and hopefully we'll get a part four. Um, maybe part four will be us eating or maybe it will be making a few other things. So thanks for watching and I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you guys next video. God bless and happy gaming. See ya and happy Thanksgiving everybody.